Um, and I want to thank Barbara Belknap and the Belknap family. David, thank you for hosting us this morning. Um, we're here to celebrate the acquisition of a 38-acre parcel that's connected to our Honey Hill Preserve that we're going to take a walk on. And uh, we worked with the Belknap family to preserve that. Um, they have a history of conservation uh, in the area, uh, including a preserve that bears their name right across the street um, that they work with the town of Wilton to preserve. And we're just very grateful that you have an ethic of, of open space and are willing to work with us to preserve the property. Uh, not everybody is, um, and we're very grateful for their support in, in, in helping to make it happen. Um, just a, a, a very brief overview, you know, this property was actually purchased by Barbara's dad, Chauncey Belknap, 90 years ago. Um, and there was only one other owner before the Belknaps, uh, is my understanding, uh, which is the Sturgis family that, re that, that, that received the property in a land grant from the English monarchy. Um, and the Sturgis's <laughs> own many, 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 many acres here. Um, it's really some very interesting history and, you know, it's not just the land, but people are really connected to the land. You know, there's always a person behind the land. Land doesn't preserve itself, people preserve land, which is, which is important. Um, and Chauncey, I believe, bought this property uh, as a getaway from New York City, where he was a lawyer at a prestigious law firm. Um, and he had quite an interesting uh, life and story uh, himself. And I had a chance uh, to walk the property with Barbara's brother Bob a few times before he passed away and he really loved this land and I remember Bob telling me when he was a kid running around this property that there were no trees <laughs> because really? remember there weren't any trees because it was all cut down for agriculture and trees to that they used to burn to make charcoal and so he had a lot of really interesting memories to tell and it was really a pleasure to be able to walk this land with Bob and um, I'd like to ask Barbara if she would like to say a few brief words about her family's history here. Oh, well, I'm glad you're all here. And originally, this, when this property was a farm, they grew some corn in the field across the road, which won a prize at the Chicago Exposition of 1890-something or other. And uh, I think Wilbur Sturgis grew onions primarily. But then in, when you had the farm, you also had the land that was no good. You couldn't farm it. And uh, that's where you had trees because that was your woodlot. And it is the woodlot for this farm that you all purchased recently uh, and and that was the land that in those days was no good uh, I'm very happy we all are that it is good and that it is, has become part of the land that uh, Aspetuck is preserving it, it was very much what our family wished the members of my family that are here today are me and my nephew Gilles Carter and Debbie Carter, yes, there she is, my niece. <laughs> and my sister is is She's well on the, on the porch. She's on the porch. Okay, my sister is sitting on the porch there. Uh, she will be celebrating her 91st birthday oh, this week. Wow. wow. But stop, and say, stop and say hello to her as you walk by. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful hike. We arranged the weather very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. I think it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very briefly, um, you know, this property uh, that Aspetuck Land Trust purchased, the Belknap property as we call it, is, is right here. Um, and this is a key parcel, you know, in our efforts to preserve 350 acres in what we're calling the Western Wilton Forest Block with the Wilton Land Conservation Trust. And Donna Merrill, the executive director from the, of the Wilton Land Trust, is here. Hi, Donna. And so Aspetuck Land Trust and Wilton Land Trust are working together to preserve the last remaining undeveloped parcels in this area. It's kind of tough to see what we're thinking about here, but all the yellow parcels are the parcels that we are trying to protect. And we just protected this 38-acre piece. We purchased this piece in Wilton 
a few years ago. This is the Wilton. This is Weston. This is Devil's Den. Um, we're, we are uh, right now um, on Wampum Hill Road, about right here. We're right here. Okay. And so we're looking at protecting the remaining yellow parcels, which will total out to about 350 acres, including this one and this one as well. And we're also working with the Nature Conservancy. Now you can kind of get a better sense of the blob, which is the forest block, which is right here. Um, so it's really an ecologically resilient landscape, which you may not know. Um, and we know it's ecologically resilient because of the mapping that the Highstead Foundation has done with Harvard Forest and the Nature Conservancy. It's important because this Belknap property, this forest block, is, is close to other protected lands. Um, over to, you can see right here, this is, this is the Belknap property here. And it's, it's, it's near the Devil's Den, which goes all the way through state land around the Saugatuck Reservoir, touches Trout Valley, our 1,009 acre property. So by preserving this area, this is our forest block, we can really create a protected open space almost the size of Troutbrook Valley and Devil's Den. We talk about Devil's Den and Troutbrook being the lungs of Fairfield County. We're going to add a third lobe to the lung right here. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. Uh, but there's good groundwater quality in the area. There, there, there are inland wetland soils. And there's a lot of rivers and streams here. And where there's water, there's life. So it's a very important landscape from an ecological perspective. So if you can look at this big map here, this is the project area that we're working on here in Weston and Wilton, where this forest block is. We're working on another one in Fairfield. This work is part of Aspetuck Land Trust's larger effort to create really a 17,000 acre green corridor through our four towns. And you can see the green corridor here and this green kind of hatch markings with two project areas where we're working to preserve some of the last large parcels. So, We've got an effort here, we've got an effort here, but it's part of a larger effort to preserve land in this green corridor. Um, we're not going to preserve all the land in the green corridor. Um, you can see some of the darker spots are properties that we already own. One of the, the, the two big things that we want to do through this 17,000 acre green corridor initiative is preserve the last large parcels, but we also want to work with homeowners, people that you know, have two or three acre lots and houses and yards to encourage them to do things on their own yards that are good for the environment, that support the ecological health of the forest block, the town and the region. Because remember, everything flows downhill and there are things that people can do in their own yards. Remember, homeowners are really landowners. So in a sense, you can be your own land trust, right? By doing things that make sense ecologically in your own yard. Um, and I know our, some of our land trust members are already doing that. I met some wonderful folks from Easton um, who are inspiring their neighbors uh, to do this work. But we're going to be moving on that vision. And it's going to take a good 10 plus years to do, but we're starting now. And um, this is our stake in the ground through this effort here and here and this larger green corridor initiative to really put open space back on the map again and get people excited about doing stuff in their own yards that is good for the environment. So um, to that end, we do have a very special guest here today, Mary Ellen LeMay, <laughs> who's going to tell a story. Uh, I'll tell you a little story which I think illustrates the importance of doing things in your own yard in, in an ecological fashion. Um, and Mel's going to talk to you about uh, a, a packet of information that we have and some pollinator plants that you can take home with you today. Uh, but this won't be the first time you hear from us. Uh, it won't be the last. We're going to keep moving this forward here in this area. Um, the Belknap property is one piece of the puzzle for us on the land acquisition front to preserve the 350 acres that we want to preserve to create this large forest block. But the ongoing work with homeowners will continue. Um, and Mel is going to talk just a little bit about that. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to go on a hike. Um, before we go on the hike, I will say right now, I want to thank Van Dusenberry, who is our trail steward here at the Honey Hill Preserve, uh, for all of his efforts to build the new trail, um, and also uh, as the coordinator of our 70 plus trail steward. So thank you, Van, for, for that. And just so 
I don't forget, uh, Anthony Zemba is our ecologist that's going to be leading us on this hike today. Where is Anthony? Hey, Anthony. Um, he's, he is so knowledgeable and very familiar uh, with this land, so I'm really looking forward to, to his hike. He studied this area in depth um, as we had to write some grants to the state to support the acquisition of this Belknap uh, parcel and um, Anthony was our person on the ground to make the case from an ecological perspective that this land was worth preserving. So with that, I'll just hand it over to Mel.